Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I am George. We're all George. And happy Friday and happy start of March. Yes, that's right. It's March 1st. And February was absolutely fantastic for Bitcoin. But you know what? March could be even better. And that's why Bitcoin could be heading to 900,000? 900,000 by this date. And if it happens, you better not miss it. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about what else is going on in the world today. Let's do it. Welcome, 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 guys. Good morning. Take a look. Bitcoin, you know, it, it utilizes 60,800 a couple times. Bounced off of that. And now we're above 62,000 once again. 62,400. It's amazing how sentiment changes just with like a thousand point move despite the fact that bitcoin is holding well above sixty thousand dollars that's the funny thing we are not far off from our previous high of like two days ago of sixty three thousand seven hundred and we have tested it eh, i would say three times one two three this time are we going to shatter through could it be as soon as today? Because after 63.7, you know what comes next. All-time high. There's not much stopping Bitcoin after 63.7 or 64,000. Okay. So we are still looking absolutely fantastic. And I'm going to explain why it's so fantastic. Starting with this. February was absolutely amazing amazing you guys should know that you saw massive gains but in case you're wondering uh we had almost a twenty thousand, yes twenty thousand monthly gain performance it is the best in bitcoin's history we have never seen even when bitcoin hit 69 thousand in 2021 we had a really good month we never had a month as good as the last one we just had. Think about that. A nearly 20K candle. That's fantastic. So can March be even better? Who's to say it can't? Maybe we print a 25K candle this time around. But that is a record, guys. A record for Bitcoin. Also, if you're tracking monthly, we have printed six consecutive months of green. And you can see in February, we had a 43.55% gain. That's the top left-hand side. 43.55, that is among the largest we have ever seen. Going all the way back to 2020. In 2020, in December, we had a 46.92 gain. And then prior to that, in 2019, in May, we had a 52-1. And I see in 2017, we had several 50% gains. We had one in May, we had one in November, and then October 47%. But, oh, and August, 20, uh, August 65%, right? Hey, 2017 was absolutely fantastic. And that, my friends was a year after the halving event because 2016 was the halving event, right? So if 2017 was even better than 2016, imagine what 2025 will be like. 2024, so far, outstanding. And we haven't even hit halving event yet. So we'll see what March does and then April and the remaining of this year. But whatever it's going to do, I think it's going to be fantastic. And 2025 will be even better. Yeah, just let that soak in. Uh, and yesterday, here's the thing. I keep talking about Supply Shock. I keep talking about BlackRock. And, you know, at this point in time, really what they do should not surprise anyone. So yesterday, for whatever reason, and it could be today too. We'll see. Grayscale sold nearly $600 million to the Bitcoin. And because of it, yeah, Bitcoin did seem to have a little weakness, went down to 60,000. And then people were wondering what's going on. 600 million is a lot. But you know what? On the opposite side, guess who bought more than 600 million? BlackRock. BlackRock alone bought 
$604 million to the Bitcoin. So if there's any doubt, if there's any doubt for, I don't know, if there's whether or not there's enough buyers to soak up all the sellers, I mean, this proves it. BlackRock alone just ate up everything that Grayscale sold. That's $600 million worth, guys. Who else on the planet has enough Bitcoin that can equal Grayscale selling or even surpass it? The answer is probably nobody. There's a few entities that may hold a little bit more than Grayscale, but very little. And are they going to be dumping $600 million per day? Outside of Satoshi and maybe, I don't know. Well, we, we have the U.S. government and China both holding, I think, $2 billion, $3 billion of the Bitcoin. I mean, unless they simultaneously dumped it at the same time, right? $600 million of the Bitcoin soaked up like it was nothing, nothing. And, and you know what I bet is the newest $10 billion club. It's the fastest ETF in history to reach 10 billion. So let that sink in. The fastest ETF ever in history to reach the 10 billion club. That's how much demand there is. Okay, the supply shock is real. And look at this. BlackRock already holds 161,000 Bitcoin. I've talked about how BlackRock is going to catch up to MicroStrategy really, really quickly. MicroStrategy has 193,000. BlackRock already has 161,000. And that's within one month. What about second month? Are they going to be up to 300,000? What about month three, four, five? By the end of this year, they can hold more than even Satoshi and have more than 1 million Bitcoin. That inflow is not stopping. That inflow is not stopping at all. So this is definitely having an effect on everything. And in case you're wondering, the OTC supply is also... I don't know how this gets measured, but the OTC supply is basically near zero. Okay, like you can see, this goes all the way back to 2019. So I don't know which ODC desk this is measuring. But yeah, obviously we had, you know, a big run up going up to 2020, right? And we started coming down since then. But if you're looking at this, because of the ETFs and whale buying, we're basically near zero. I don't know how much Coinbase have left to sell, but... I'm just going to say, go on a limb by, by sometime this year, there's just nothing. Coinbase is going to close doors to these OTC uh, buys because there's just not enough. They need to reserve it for their own retail investors too, right? Um, so again, supply shock. You add all this together. This is why Bitcoin is moving so fast. And Bitcoin's unstoppable. And a lot of people are asking, why doesn't Bitcoin go down? We should be having, you know, we should have a dip. We should have a major dip. We should have a retracement. We should have this. We should have that. How could you have any kind of retracement when there's this much buying? Overnight, we had someone just pull out a billion dollars from Coinbase Yeah, that's someone buying. And here's something else. In case you're not bullish enough, <laughs> let me get you more bullish news. Um, this is this shows who's accumulating right now. And recently I showed this where it showed only the big boys accumulating. Okay, this has been updated. And if you look very carefully on the right side, Every single, every single category is in the blue. And what does that mean? That means everyone, including people that have sub one Bitcoin, one to 10 Bitcoin, 10 to 100, 100 to 1,000, 1,000 to 10,000, and above 10,000 are all simultaneously now accumulating. 
When was the last time this happened? Well, you go back a little bit. That kind of started in October, November. Remember, that was when it was really bullish. So we're now seeing the same effect. People are definitely feeling FOMO. I'm getting random people asking me about Bitcoin. And we see meme coins exploding right now. So there's definitely interest from all sides. And of course, the institutions, they have a lot of interest. That's why they continue to buy more and more from the ETFs. And why whales continue to buy by the billions randomly, suddenly, right? So it's looking good. It's looking really, really good. Uh, this one is also showing why Bitcoin is so strong because there's a massive amount of addresses that purchase Bitcoin anywhere from, you know, 60 to 62,000, right? And those guys are not selling. And then look at the, the buy walls from, you know, before, right? You have massive buy walls at 52, 54, 56, 58, 60. You know, again, it's like these are all major resistances. So this is another reason why Bitcoin is not going down because these guys are all in the green and they're not selling no matter what. That's another reason why. Man, there's so much bullsh <laughs> there's so much bullishness. Um man, I, I, I don't know. If you're still not bull, I don't know what it's gonna make you, but I'm getting to my point of nine hundred thousand. Trust me. Uh here, here's another example of our current trajectory. We have broken through, okay. Uh, what do you call this? This four-year cycle resistance. That's probably a Fibonacci level. You know, Red Capital didn't say what it is, but it's probably some Fibonacci level. And normally speaking, it's that 61.8 level, and it never, ever, ever breaks before the halving event. And look at what just happened, right? So again, we're very, very ahead for this cycle and it's not going to stop. And according to plan B, we have just printed the very first red dot, which means officially we are in the bull market cycle. So I would say we have officially entered a parabolic bull market cycle. I would say according to plan B, like the accumulation stage, the blue, that to, for me is the bull market. That means we started a new four year cycle and we started trending upwards, right? But now is when we get to the parabolic cycle, okay? We have printed our very first dot and there's many more dots to come. So how are we gonna get to 900,000? Well, according to the stock to flow model, we should have hit 100,000 by 2021, but we didn't because we had some macro conditions we couldn't overcome. Meaning in the US, we had Fed hikes, rate hikes, a lot of them. So it kind of stalled the progress. If not, I think we would have hit that $100,000. And plus there was a lot of FTX shenanigans, okay? SBF doing his market manipulation and so forth. That could have had a lot to do with it too. But this time around, we're back. We're back on track. And if we keep on going, this one doesn't even show the red dot. If it shows the red dot, we would have formed the first one here. And according to this, if we're going to go back on track, we should hit like $900,000 by the end of 2025. And I know what you're thinking, $900,000, is that even reasonable? Is that even possible? Or is that a silly dream at this point? Well, let me show you something. Oops. Where's that chart I want to show? This chart right here. So, I mean, this is basically just marking out, right? The marking out the top and projecting where we should be. If you look at 2021, again, had we not had macro conditions like in the U.S., we had Fed rate cuts, I mean, Fed rate hikes. Had we not had that, Bitcoin would have hit that trend line. And that trend line is right around $100,000. 
So if we pretend like, yeah, we hit $100,000 and we hit 20,000 in 2017, right? Then the next trajectory for the end of 2025 is around there, around 900,000. It's not quite there yet, but it, it shows it shows more like, you know, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars, right? But you know what? This cycle may be unlike any other cycle before. Maybe we don't just hit a peak and just start coming down. With the big boys that continue to buy ETFs and hold ETFs, who's to say that we have to end our cycle in 2025? Maybe we just keep on going. Maybe this cycle becomes a super cycle and we just slowly trend upwards forever. We have no more 70, 80% dips for Bitcoin. This may be the last cycle that anyone could accumulate cheap Bitcoin. And if that's the case, if we're heading in that same trajectory, well, you could see that, yeah, 900,000 is not too far off. According to this, it will happen in 2025. Maybe not the, not the, the, the very, you know, maybe not, not right away, but maybe we will hit it in 2025. I guess we'll just have to see. We'll have to see. We'll have to see what, what Bitcoin ends up by the end of this year. And then we'll see where it ends up mid next year. And then we'll see where it ends up by the end of 2025. If we had, if we somehow hit 900,000 by 2025, you guys all need to give me like million dollar super chats. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But you know what? We'll see. It's in the charts. Uh, all right, what else is there? Just the last few things. Uh, banks desperately wanting to get involved with Bitcoin. Yesterday, I covered how Merrill Lynch and uh, Wells Fargo, um, you know, tried to advise their clients to to buy Bitcoin ETFs. Other banks, you know, they, they're arguing that they need to get in. They need to be custodians. Why can't they be custodians? And now it seems like they may get their wish. So even though a lot of banks won't let you buy crypto with your bank accounts, they want to hold your crypto. Tell me that. Like, that doesn't make a lot of sense, right? But yeah, they're all getting involved. And uh, lastly, in case you're wondering, uh, WIF just got added to Robinhood in Europe, which means they're most likely going to get added in Robinhood in the U.S. soon. And that also means that WIF is probably going to get added to Coinbase because they are already at 1 billion market cap. They were a little bit above, retracing a little bit. I mean, at this point, you got to figure Coinbase is next. Coinbase already added Bonk, and that they added it before they hit a billion. And now WIF is at a billion, so they're going to be added next. Um, so... That's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good indeed. All right. That is pretty much it. Looks like we came down a little bit. Maybe Grayscale is selling more. But at this point in time, guys, there is there should be zero fear. Based on what everything I just said today. There's so much goodness going on right now. There's so much FOMO that's going on right now. Now, you can't discount everything I just said. Maybe maybe 900K by 2025, but you know what? Like I said before, this cycle is unlike any other cycle. We have never been led by institutions. And these institutions have not just billions, but some have trillions of liquidity. We have never, ever, ever had these guys FOMO in like this before. Not even in 2021. 2021, you could argue we had whales, maybe Michael Saylor, but that's it. We never truly had big hedge funds and sovereign funds and family offices and other funds that are all trying to FOMO into Bitcoin. So this cycle, it's already looking different, but by the end of this cycle, I think it's going to look way more different 
than any previous cycle we we've gone through before. All right, let's do some let's do some Q and A. Happy Friday, everyone. Happy Friday. Live chats blowing up these days. 7,000 people here. Um, let me show this. Uh, where's that red dot? There we go. Uh, Crypto Sniper Gaming ass thoughts on the Blob ETH upgrade, the Den Coon upgrade. It looks, it sounds fantastic for L2s. I just covered that last night. I think all the L2s for Ethereum could see a big bump after it comes out. Uh, I think the date is in a couple weeks, March 13th or something. I think that could be good. Brian Sun says, I'm out at 200K. Well, you'll see. If Bitcoin hits 200K, I wonder if you really will just cash all of it out. <laughs> Greed steps in. Alluvium or IMX to cycle DL ass. You know what? I, I like, uh, I like a mutable a lot. Not so much on Alluvium, so... When George with G <laughs> with, I should come out with G with. Solvent says thoughts on Fed. It's on a tear. You could see if I, you know, Fed is one of those AI plays that have. Uh, broke already broken through its previous high and it keeps like going and going and going which is actually really surprising these are not true ai they're like a l1 with ai agents but still i mean look at this they shattered their 2021 all-time high and they continue to go up they are doing outstanding and you know relatively speaking compared to other chains they're still somewhat cheap 1.5 they're in my dca portfolio too and they they're up the most they are doing very fantastic. Kuji, 200 million TVL. Um, I don't have much to say other than they are promising and they're within Cosmos. And like you said, TVL is growing. So that's all good. But they don't seem to have the same kind of momentum as others. Cosmos plays kind of cooled down a little bit. You'll notice that Injectives, Celestia, Say, Osmosis, uh, Akash, they kind of lost a little bit of momentum recently with a push, but I think they will get it back. And if so, maybe Kujera could be another candidate. What is wrong with all the L2s? Everything is doing good except L2s. Arkham, which no one knew about, has done 5x and 30 You know what? Just wait until the, the upgrade happens. The Denku upgrades go happen in like two weeks. We may see some major movement afterwards. They, they become more efficient and cheaper. I don't know how much cheaper. Supposedly, it's going to get really cheap. So it just makes it so much better for them. Ryan says, what's your honest price prediction <coughs> at this point in time? 
Uh, I'd say like 125 by the end of this year and 250 by end of 2025. But again, it really depends. It really depends. Bitwise, Bitwise, the CIO, basically yesterday said that if you thought the waves were big already, wait until um, a couple of months have passed because he believes the the whale the the waves of buyers are going to get even bigger. Seriously, like. FOMO never really stops until someone pops the bubble. But this time around, I don't know if there's anyone that's going to pop the bubble. The ETFs just keep buying and buying and buying and buying and buying. I mean, whatever Grayscale selling today, if they are still selling, BlackRock's going to eat it all. I mean, it's a it's mind-boggling if you think about Grayscale sold $600 million and BlackRock bought more than $600 million. I mean, that's that's insane if you think about it. Roy and Bing. Okay, thank you. George, how can these two guys on CoinMarketCap voting be included when they don't even have videos? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But you guys could all go vote for me and maybe I could win. Yeah, CBK, that's never going to happen. <laughs> I could barely walk these days. You think you'll retire this cycle? Uh, New England Patriots. Um, I was thinking about it. If things go as well as they do, like, like, yeah, I should, I should retire after 2025. <laughs> Or I at least change my setup so that I'm not streaming twice a day. Um, I'll probably still stream randomly. But yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. Andrew Luz asks, Hey George, when you were at rock bottom, did you feel like no matter what you did, you just lost? And how did you break that mindset? I did. I went through that many times. The last time I went through that, was right after let me let me let me try to think i i i i had that happen twice i had that happen after i got married and <laughs> not because i got married was because i was dead broke at that point i was super super broke and uh that was after um the housing bubble uh housing bubble that was around 2009 and I lost everything in the stock market. You know, at that point I was playing like with like probably 40 K I didn't understand. I, I took out credit card loans to buy stocks. Everything crashed. I lost it all. And I had a huge amount of debt and it got me super depressed. And that's when I cut off all investments. I didn't want to look at anything. And I went on a hardcore, uh, diet and exercise regime and you know i eventually lost like 50 pounds i got down to like 170 i was in the greatest shape of my life until i um until i pulled my acl and then that kind of stopped that that was the first time i just like i didn't know what to do like financially i was just shattered but i decided to find my motivation somewhere else Right. So that's kind of like how I move forward and uh, kind of the same thing happened in 2018 and 2019, because that's when I got laid off from my job. I went full time YouTube. Crypto YouTube was great until it wasn't because uh, everyone got discouraged and left. I didn't leave, but I wasn't making any money from it. So I got really desperate financially. Either I had to go get a job or stick it with YouTube. And that's when I started my car channel drivers only. And I worked very hard at that and cryptos are us, but cryptos are us, which just wasn't growing because crypto was so bearish back then. I grew my car channel and that's how I was able to sustain myself. And finally I started making money. So those were like kind of the two times where I hit kind of like a rock bottom.
Uh, Victor asks, I bought a couple hundred of he mule back in Christmas. It's pumping hard. Should I take profits now? When it comes to memes, you should always take profits. Okay, don't let it ride to the moon because 99.9% .9 of the chance um, it's not going to go to the moon. It will come down. So if you're if you're making big money, take some profits. Take some profits. Doesn't mean you have to sell all of it. Can you comment on a new DFK news? Well, I don't have all the information. Not much was shared. So I have to talk to Dreamer more about it. Um, Ando Finance, a big mention in the chat a few weeks ago. They are a real world asset play, tokenized US Treasury. Yeah, I still don't like it. No matter how much it pumps, I'm not going to support that project. Yeah, I'm gonna start up drivers only again. I, you know, I took a lot, like a long break from it, but I'm gonna start that up again now that it's warmer. Uh, what what's the one I show? Show that. Uh, thoughts on. Aerodrome. Someone asked me about that before. I, I don't I don't have much to say about Aerodrome, to be honest. What cold wallet do you recommend? I think Ledger is still safe, even though they took up a huge beating, a self beating <laughs> that was self caused. But yeah, I think they're still good. Why is Nira not on Coinbase? I think it's the only top one hundred project on Coinbase. Bullish. I don't know. I have no idea why, but yeah, could be if they ever list them. Uh, you and Galaxy CEO, I'm assuming you're saying Mike Novogratz. This is uh, Brown asking. Uh, said most of crypto will surpass the previous highs. Will it actually happen, or we're just assuming? Such a comp versus all-time high 900 plus, and now it's 91. We're just going based on history. I mean, Mike Novogratz has been an OG in the space for a while, and same with me. But it's it's kind of like you go based on history. You know, of course, it could maybe not happen, but it's likely it will. See, I, I got into crypto very early, and I remember Ethereum first hitting you know, 400 over here, and then eventually settling at like 1400 in 2018, right? The last two weeks, the first two weeks of January was spectacular. Then we saw Ethereum go all the way down to like 100 something. And then, of course, Ethereum topped out at like 5000 in 2021, right? So that's an example. That's an example like, yeah, we formed a high and then we formed a bigger high, right? Look at where Ethereum is right now. Ethereum is more than halfway getting back to its previous high. And if you're if you're projecting, it definitely looks like Ethereum is going to form a new high this year, right? So that's what we're doing. We're just using history. And most coins, most coins, with the exception of maybe XRP, um, does that. XRP is the only one where, not the only, but probably the, the, the only one within the top 100 that did not break their 2018 high not even close but can they do it this time around i hope for the sake of xrp holders they do H have you ever heard of spell token yeah i don't like it i don't like it at all classic trading 900k <laughs> Where are you smoking? Uh, unfortunately, nothing at the moment.
Listen, guys. Nothing. Nothing is unattainable. Okay. Um, maybe you'd have to you have to stretch out the timeline a little bit. But if you're measuring tops, you know, it, it is possible. There's so many things happening that we don't know right now. Okay. Let's just wait and see. But if 900K happens, we will all be shocked. But none of us would turn it down. And every one of us will be riding in our mega yachts then. <laughs> so... But George, can Bitcoin have a bigger market cap than gold? That's another thing, yes. Bitcoin has to be above $700,000 to be above the market cap of gold. And do you think that can happen? For me, yes. Sailor certainly thinks that can happen. Uh, Max Kaiser certainly thinks that can happen. Many people are starting to realize that maybe that's a reality. So Bitcoin hitting 900000 is far-fetched as that seems. That would barely put... Bitcoin's market cap above gold's. So keep in mind, gold does not have a set supply. Bitcoin does. Gold is predominantly controlled by miners and the company, the mining companies. Bitcoin, no. Bitcoin's controlled by code. There's only so much that gets released per day. You can't pretend to suffocate the supply or pretend to oversat or cause manipulation by oversaturating the supply or anything like that. No, the miners get what they get, regardless of how much they mine. That's it. The code auto adjusts. It's a beautiful and perfect system. Um, unlike the real, you know, mining companies that are that are like controlling the the gold supply right now. So. Anything's possible. If Bitcoin goes to 600K, what would the ETS be at? I, I have no idea. I have no idea. I just know that BlackRock is go catch up to Michael Saylor's uh, microstrategy, possibly, possibly by the end of next week. That's how fast they're accumulating. I remember covering they were only at 130,000 last week. They're above 161,000 already. And if they can accumulate this much, this fast, within a month, a month and a half, you know, multiply that by 12, multiply that by 15, 16, and then 2025. They will have probably, if I had to guess at this current rate, they could be having 2 million Bitcoin. By the end of 2025, they will have more than Satoshi. Not that that's a good thing. No one should have more Bitcoin than Satoshi. But the way they are accumulating, and it's not just them, Fidelity is above 100,000 too. The way they're accumulating, they will have more than Satoshi in the future. <clears throat> Yeah, AI plays right now, for those of you guys that are wondering, AI plays are hot. And I don't think they're going to stop. I cover the AI, all the major ones. Fetch AI is one. And then you got Tau, BitSensor, another one, right? And then you have uh, Singularity. Man, Singularity is pumping like crazy right now. I don't even know really why. Man, 32% Singularity craziness. They're probably the most exciting project on Cardano. I know another one, uh, Ocean. Ocean up 20%. Like all these AI plays are skyrocketing right now. Uh, my portfolio 20% sold, 20% AVAX, 20% engine. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, any opinion? You don't have any Bitcoin. And that's a bad thing. You need to have Bitcoin. You can't have all all portfolio. You'll hurt yourself by doing that. 
Safe to keep coins in exchange or best in ledger. Of course, the safest play is to self custody them, but you know, some exchanges like Coinbase, I just don't see them going down and losing your coins. I take that back. They have gone down before. They went down recently, but um, it's it's better to self custody your your own crypto if you can, um, or mix it, or leave whatever you want to trade on exchanges and everything else. You know, take off. All right, sorting by last 24 hours. Pepe, another one doing very good, 18%. Uh, I talked about Singularity and Fetch. Axelar doing really good. So they're like a liquidity provider for a lot of DEXs. Uh, the graph, a bit sensor. I think the graph, people associate the graph and AI, but they're really not, has nothing to do with AI, but people do associate them with that. Bit sensor is in here. Chili is in here. Leo token sandbox beam doing very well. I love beam Uniswap doing very well. They recently announced this new proposal that pumped them up. Uh, Kronos, KuCoin share, Neo. I'm really surprised Neo is still around. That's just like such an old coin that went nowhere. Um, Decentraland. I'm I'm not a fan of Decentraland or Sandbox. I just don't I don't get the metaverse play. Worldcoin, Sam Allman's being sued by Elon and they're still going up. Uh, that's kind of funny. But today it looks like AI gaming is leading the way. All the memes are doing great for some reason. I have two theories about that. Number one, we have a lot of new retail investors that are feeling FOMO, they're coming in, and what do they buy? They always buy memes. They, no one buys Bitcoin. Um, and two, there could be some whales that are artificially driving them up. We have seen that before many times, and they rotate from one meme to another to another and another. Do you think they will investigate Coinbase for foul play? They have done that already, man. The SEC, Department of Justice, whoever, they have all looked at Coinbase before, see like why they go down or insider trading speculation and all that stuff they come out just fine crypto crap crypto cafe i gave up on nulls years and years and years and years ago you're just trying to troll you probably have not tuned in for years upon years upon years. I gave up on them because the leaders left. They they left and started a new company. And they tried to get me involved with a new company. I said, no thanks. And I think that new company already failed. Nosana is the best AI play on Solana. Yeah, you know what? You're not the only one that said that. They have done very, very well recently. Very well <laughs> since November. Um, the thing is, they're still small compared to others. And they're not on a lot of exchanges. They're not on the big ones. Solana launching the first decentralized app store and the first crypto phone uh, with Google and its Oracle. Uh, those are old news. They already launched many phones. Two phones, in fact. Or they're about to. Are you familiar with Project Telos and Alphium? Telos, Alphium. Yeah. I mean, they're all ones. I don't know too much about them.
Martin, um, thank you. If I go only DCA $50 a day, is there hope for me? Yes. It's better than not DCA $50 a day. That's for sure. And a lot of these crypto plays will do 10x, 15x, 20x. So $50 a day, you times that by 10, 15, 20, 25x, it adds up. You're probably not going to be a millionaire this cycle, but there's always the next cycle. And these cycles are only four years. So, I mean, within a decade, you're talking about two and a half cycles. That, that adds up a lot. They're, they like compound on top of each other. Uh, when will WIF be listed on Coinbase? I think soon. I think WIF is going to get a huge announcement soon. I mean, they already got listed on Robinhood Europe, so pretty soon Robinhood of US, and then soon Coinbase. And then soon Binance. Well, they probably have Binance already. If we get to 900k BDC, what will Seoul be? Oh, Seoul is going to be much higher than 2,000. Seoul will probably get to 2,000 by the end of this cycle, man. Um, if Bitcoin hits 900k, Seoul will be like 20,000. <laughs> I think Seoul is going to be above 1,000 by the end of the year. So that means if it hits 1,000 by the end of the year, that means it only has to do, do a 2x in 2025. And that's actually pretty conservative. So Seoul, will, in my opinion, will hit 2,000 by the end of the cycle. Um, and that's assuming Bitcoin goes to 200,000 or 250,000. If Bitcoin goes to 900,000, then you, you multiply that 2,000 by another like 10x. Seoul will be like 20,000 at that point. Marcy, I just know that Fed is probably going to go a lot higher. I don't know where it's going to go, but it's going to go a lot higher. Cropper finance? Okay, I'm not even going to look at that. I'm not going to repeat that. Um, uh, price prediction on Link. I don't know, guys. I don't have a magic eight ball, okay? I can't tell you where Link is going to be exactly. But it's doing very well. It's one of the big caps. Their CCIP is a game changer for them. And uh, they're going to do very well. They're going to be doing very well this cycle. That's all I know. I mean, they're so important in the space. If Chainlink shut down, like almost every dApp shuts down. Almost everyone uses Chainlink. Even though Pith is coming up, they are nowhere close to Chainlink size. Digital Destiny, do you think Top 10 will have ETF in the next two years? No. No. I think in the next two years... What we'll have is Ethereum and maybe one more. ETFs are not that easy to get approved. So I, I'd say we will have Ethereum ETF in the next two years. The next candidate, probably, as unlikely as it sounds, would probably be XRP. Because XRP was already mm -hmm. ruled a non-security. So according to SEC, there are only three non-securities, three commodities. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. So I think XRP is probably the one after that, but I don't think we're getting that in 
Thank you for the super chat. I can't. The Grumpy Dad says, I can't see XRP getting approved out of spite with the SEC unless there's a whole new regime in there. That could happen. Gary is probably on his way out. And if he, if he gets kicked out or he retires or, you know, whatever, steps down, uh, that XRP lawsuit could be over. There's one pending XRP lawsuit. And until that gets resolved, XRP is probably not going anywhere. Key Jenkins, thank you. Thank you for being my guide since 2020. DCA works. It does. Two coins. Two coiner. That's very impressive. That's $122, $123,000. I don't, I, you know, s saying you have two coins doesn't sound like it's impressive, but if you measure in dollars, that's $120,000. That's super, super, super impressive. Very little people have more than one Bitcoin. Very little people have even half a Bitcoin. All right, guys. To conclude... Bitcoin, supply shock, FOMO, still happening, happening. You got everyone that's trying to FOMO. We closed out the best month ever, basically, for Bitcoin in terms of gains. And that's just the beginning. We're not even at the halving event. We're not at the end of the year. We're not in 2025. And these ETFs, man, don't ignore them. They keep on buying and soaking up the supply. That's not going to stop. So stay strong, my friends. Smash it a like. Subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys not tonight since it's Friday. I'll see you guys tomorrow, 10.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. All right. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.